Okay, so today we are going to pick, we're going to paint this welcome sign. It's going to go right outside my front door, um, just on the ground. And I do have this purposely off center, so I have it to the left because I am going to paint a sunflower coming up this side with the head of the sunflower right here. So that is my plan today. So it's going to be a sunflower in the background with the welcome on top. Uh, colors I'm going to do today is going to be an off-white. It's actually my wall color right here, which looks white. It's a tiny bit uh, gray, uh, beige gray. Um, so that's going to be what I'm, that's what I'm going to do for the background color. Um, for the sunflower, it'll be green with uh, yellows and reds. And then for the word welcome, I kind of like this color that someone had used right here. It's a teal, a little darkish teal color. I think that's what I'm going to do for the word welcome, but I might change that. I might change it to a red or even maybe a dark blue. Um, I don't know if I would like the teal color next to the green stem. So I'm thinking I might change that color, maybe a deep, deep red. So we'll, we'll see when we get there what color I end up doing. And um, that's it. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to go ahead and switch views so you can see the up close view of this. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, take this stencil off first. Set my stencil aside here. Okay, I'm going, I'm using this, um, three inch brush. I actually got this brush at the dollar store. I find that these are the best brushes to use. This paint is very, the paint you get from paint stores, um, the type of paint that goes on your walls is very hard on brushes. So I find the dollar store brushes hold up just as well as the more expensive ones. And from what I have seen, um, as long as I wash them. And eventually, no matter what brush I use, they get bad and need to be thrown out, so. But let me know if you have a better brush option that you like. Um, the good thing, and what I'm trying to do is make my brush strokes very even. So I'm trying to make them as long as possible. That way, because what you don't want, and it's a minor thing, but if I go like this and I pick it up, it actually leaves a texture that isn't as pretty. So you can kind of see that when I tilt the board here. So you kind of want to avoid those little texture marks. And the way I do that is just doing one big stroke and going as far as I can with those brush strokes. Wood does kind of soak up that first layer of paint. So you will go through a decent amount of paint for this background. You can't see everything I'm doing, but I'm following the same procedures all the way down the board. Move it down a little bit. I'm trying to keep my brush strokes all the same direction. And I'm turning it sideways as I go up the sides, but keeping it flat for the middle. And this, the background doesn't need to be um, perfect, so. I also don't want to put it on super crazy thick, um, just so I have, just so it has time to dry. If I put it on super thick, it's going to, um, it's going to take forever to dry and I want it dry before I put my stencil on. 
So now I'm just going in and smoothing out anywhere I think that looks a little bit rough or if I see any wood peeking through. Okay, so that's it for this. I see a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna soak this brush in water. Um, the key to using, um, to keeping your brushes from going bad is to not let the paint uh, dry on them. As long as the paint doesn't dry on them, they will last you a long time. But if you let the paint dry, it's almost impossible to get, them, get it off. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is along the right hand side, I'm gonna do a big green line. I might switch views for us here. And something that I like to do is I like to always have, even if I'm making something like this, this flower is gonna be craftier today, but I always like to have um, multiple colors on my brush. I, or not always, but a lot of the times it adds a little bit more dimension. So I'm gonna do green and then yellow and blue. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do here is I have those three colors that you just saw and I'm going to use a flat. This is a, it looks like a one inch brush. This is a nice one, so exciting. And I'm gonna go up the side here with this um, green with a little bit of yellow and blue on my brush. I'm mixing those just a little bit. So you can see I mixed them a little bit on here Little yellow, little blue, but mostly green. And I'll I'll be done. I'll be doing that same kind of thing for um, the sunflower. So I'll give you a zoomed up view of that. So I'm gonna come up the side here, and I, the white isn't dry, which is okay right now. So I've, I've got ooh, I've got some white. I didn't want that. And I am holding this brush. sideways because I want the paint I want a nice straight line so when you're when you're using this brush I'm going up this way not flat because I want a thick layer and I want it to be um, I want it to be pretty straight um, even though I want it pretty, I'm not worried about it being perfectly straight because this is like just you know the stem of a sunflower so it doesn't need to be perfectly straight I think about right there is probably good so that's what's neat about what's nice about the sunflower. I love sunflowers, but um, is that they're really easily recognizable. So you don't have to do a good job painting it for people to know what it is, which gives you a lot of room to be flexible and be a little bit um, silly with it and kind of just make it whatever. Okay, so that's that. Now I want I want at least one leaf coming in here. So. I'm gonna go down there a little bit more here first. One big line. Okay. So there's my big green line. 
I'm in almost the top of my sunflower. And now I want a leaf somewhere. So I think about right here. Looks good. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to come up. Oh, maybe a little higher. Right here. This guy. There's my big leaf. And I'll go ahead and switch views here in just a minute. So I do want this to be almost touching this edge here. I'm going to put a little yellow on this side. And a little blue. There's my leaf. So I'll go ahead and zoom into this so you can see this close up here. Because I'm also going to do some grass at the bottom. And I'll mess with that a little bit more in a different view. But you've got the overall idea here. Very organic looking leaf there. And that white is almost dry already. I am being careful where I touch this though. So you can see, and I just used my thick brush for this because I do want this to look a little bit, I do want this to look crafty today. And I, um, so I'm not gonna worry about trying to put veins in my sunflower today. Just gonna leave it crafty and kind of fun. And I'm gonna just smooth it out just a tad. One reason I want to smooth it out is to make sure that this green, the blue, I, I don't want it to be super thick because then it won't dry in time for me to put my stencil on top. I am thinking that teal color that I was thinking about, I don't want to do that on here because my welcome is going to go right over this and that teal will just blend in. Bringing in a little bit of yellow here. Just so I have some variety of color in there. But yeah, I think the teal won't stand out enough. So I might do, I might do a red, but I don't want it to look like Christmas. So I think a lot about color choices with the stenciling. I'm also gonna do a little bit of yellow coming down the side and in, in the towards the center and I'm just kind of it's blending as it goes and a little blue towards the outside Ooh, that's a little too much blue so a little blue towards the outside here creating a little bit of a shadow again I'm not trying to make it look too Realistic, but just a little bit of shadowing in there. I also don't want it to look printed, so. So there we go for that. Let me get my light a little bit better. Here. Okay. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add grass to the bottom. I wanna do this while I still have this. So I'm gonna go this way. Open. I have a little clump of paint right there. Okay, so I'm I am gonna put this away finally. This big brush, and again I'm gonna put it directly into water. Just doing a little bit more blending right here on the bottom. Okay, it's hard to see the exact colors, but 
All right, so for this grass along the bottom, again, I'm gonna put this brush directly in water. Oh, maybe. And I'm gonna use, sorry, the water's running here, but. Okay, so I'm gonna use this, it's called Donna and Dewberry. It's a flat number eight brush. And um, I'm gonna go on a sideways angle. I'm just gonna go up about, I wanna go about two inches up. So about three fingers up. And same thing as before, I'm gonna do a lot of green. The first layer I'm gonna do green with blue, and then I'll do a second layer of green with white. So I'm trying to get, I want a lot of paint on my brush. all of these. I'm going to go somewhat quickly. And the reason I'm holding, I'm holding it again this way here, Ooh. Uh, not flat. I'm holding it sideways and I find that that gives it, it's easier to make long, long, long thick lines when I do it sideways. Because it, it holds a little bit more paint that way. And I'm making this a lot longer than I said. They're, they're actually coming out longer. Okay, now I'm gonna switch to more just green. Going another layer on here, going right on top of the old one the first layer. And if my brush picks up some blue, that's okay. I don't need every single leaf to be distinguishable, but I do always want to pull up, which I just made that mistake. So I always want to go from bottom to top. I want to keep that pattern of going bottom to top. Yeah. Getting this off a little bit. Maybe I should have stayed with that thicker brush. These are okay. So now I'm going to add a little yellow. I don't want too much yellow because yellow can also make it look like it's unhealthy or that it's like dying a little bit. So Okay, there's my little grass. It's a little silly. And then the next part, I'm gonna blend this bottom just in just a little bit. Okay, then the next part I'm gonna do, set that plate aside, is my sun, or the center of my sunflower will be next. So I'm moving this down. Here. 
Okay, so I'm gonna get some brown. I wanna do a big brown circle. So, and I believe this is, what is this? I think this is like horse, but I wouldn't be too particular about the brown. Any brown will work. And we're gonna do, oh gosh. Oh no, that just exploded. My paint bottle just exploded. So I got a little brown on everything. Okay. Well, nothing paper towel can't fix. Okay, so your paint explodes on your painting. Use a damp towel. to wipe it off and try to use clean parts of the towel. So I'm gonna have to turn it, because once it's dirty, it just smears it. I actually don't mind the little bit of brown in the background. Okay. What's going to be hard is that I also got clumps of brown on my green. See on my green. Ugh, a mess. So I'm going to carefully. There we go. I got it on my leaf. That's the bummer part. Not on my computer though, so that's good. Sorry, I know I'm off frame here. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little bit more. All right, I'll show you what happened here. When I corrected my, when I took the brown off of my leaf, I got, I took off a little bit of paint. It did put a, I, I have a little bit of streaks here now of the other colors on top of the white. I can paint over those. I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm gonna leave them. Some of them I'll get rid of. But, um, so I'm gonna correct this first, my leaf. Not too bad. I'm going to use a different brush. The other one's soaking in water and I don't want to um, I don't want I don't want to use that one. Okay, there we go. I scrubbed it a little bit because there is a texture that was created by that, that brown, took off a layer of green paint. So I wanted to rub my brush on it a little bit to get rid of that texture. I'm gonna do the same thing down here. I'm like, almost like I'm sanding it down with the brush just a little bit. Okay, not too bad. I 
and a little bit right here. Again, kind of sanding it a little bit with my brush. These uh, paints, and I, I kind of knew that, but these paints have been in my garage for a bit so that the lid kind of glued down with paint. So I squeezed it a little too hard. Okay, there we go. That corrected pretty well. Let me do a line down. Okay. There we go. Oh, I actually kind of like that more. It's like two different greens on there. So there you go. Happy accident. Worked out. Okay, a little improvement to my leaf there. I actually like it a little bit more now. All right, so back to the top. Um, I'm just going to use a little bit of white in some places that I see a little brown. Okay. There's a little clump right there. I'm just gonna use my finger here. You're really not supposed to use your finger, but sometimes the, the, the pigments, the oils in your skin can mess with the pigments of the paint. So you're really not supposed to, but I do. Okay, so um, the next thing I'm gonna do is a circle for the center now. Back, back to where we were. Um, I am going to um, use this, my little painter's tape here. I want about half of the flower. So I'm gonna use that just to help me draw my center here. And I want it bigger than this, so I'm just gonna go. And I'm using the, the same brush I just used. So it has green and blue and yellow on it. So brown has every color in it. So brown has every primary color in it. So it has a little yellow, a little blue, and a little um, red. Make it a little bit bigger. And there we go. So let's see how that circle looks. Okay, and then I'm just gonna fill it in with my brown, making it a little bit bigger. There we go. Using this one inch brush here. Oh, I just touched over. Okay. I'm trying to be careful where I'm touching because my hand can kind of stick to this white because that white's not absolutely dry yet. All right. I'm doing a nice thick layer of brown. Now my welcome sign isn't gonna be on this. So I'm not worried about this being super thick. I also have a little gap here. I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna fill it in with petals. And go a little bit bigger. See my circle keeps growing and that's okay. Okay, now in the center of sunflowers, you have your seeds and you have all of your almost circles within circles. So I am going to recreate those next because I don't want it to be just, um, I don't want it to be just a big blob of brown. So hopefully, 
I don't explode this paint too. So I'm going to do a little bit of brown. A little bit of red and I have some yellow. And I'm going to use my sponge brushes. And this I believe is Red Wagon. It's a... So I'm going to create a little bit of a yellow in the center. So I've got yellow on my sponge brush. Oh, it's jumping. And a little bit of brown. I'm gonna, that's what I'm doing here, let me see, is I'm doing a yellow with a brown and I'm mixing it just a little bit by tapping up and down right there. I'm gonna do a little more yellow. There we go. And I blended it just a little bit, so that's what it looks like now. I'm just gonna go right in the center with that there. A little bit more of that yellow. And I'm turning this as I go so that it's even. I'm gonna do a little more yellow and I may have gotten just a touch of green in there, and that's okay. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna do a little bit of, I'm gonna use that same brush so I'm not cleaning it off. I'm gonna do yellow with a little bit of red. And I'm gonna go around that. And I might do more texture later on that last layer after I do all of my petals, but I'm not gonna do those. Uh, maybe I'll do it again. I'll do it now. And then I can always do So I might be doing this center again a little bit because I'm going to go a little bit outside my circle here. But most of that's going to get lost when I do my petal, so I might have to bring that back later and that's okay. Okay, so there's my little flower center. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is my petals. Um, my petals are gonna be yellow and red. Okay, so I have yellow and red right here. Maybe a little, I'll probably need more red. And I'm, um, I'm going to do two layers of petals. The first layer, I'm gonna do more red, and the second layer, I'm gonna do more yellow. And they'll be layered on top of each other. Oh, please don't explode on me. Let me try pushing the back of. Okay. I'm gonna use this flat tip. I do really like flat tip brushes, if you haven't noticed. Um, and I'm gonna try to make them about equal distance from that center point. So the first few, I'm gonna do a lot more red. I'm gonna kind of blend these. And if I get a little brown on my brush, that's okay. That's why it's on my brown plate. And then, oop. Coming here at an angle here. I'm going to go up. And this is the pattern. now. Um, I said earlier, I'm not trying to recreate a realistic flower. If I was trying to recreate a realistic flower, these would not be the exact same size or ex the exact same direction, but I'm going for a craftier look. So they can, there's a little bit more forgiveness in those. 
So I'm gonna go try to make them all about that size. And then I'm gonna come in and put yellow on the ends of these. So red towards the uh, red toward the center and yellow towards the end. And I can use, I might go in with a flat brush and just, I mean a, a round brush and do that a little bit more. And the reason I started over here is because this green right here is still drying. So I'm trying not to do, I'm trying to save that for the end, give it time to dry. And same thing with this whole board. I did this at the end because the word welcome isn't touching the flower. Hopefully if I estimated my size right, ooh, I just dropped a little bit of red. Okay, so that's my first layer. I am gonna go in now with a thin brush, a round brush. Let's see if I have a good one. Yeah, this one's good. And then I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to do lines. Um, I'm gonna do red lines in the middle towards the center and yellow lines at the end. Cause I, like I said, I wanna fall, oops, and I need one more petal right here, kind of coming off. So I'm gonna do a couple red lines coming up from the bottom. Oops, a piece of that just broke off. Always starting from the center. I'm gonna do a few yellow lines. So you always wanna choose things, anytime you're doing a project, you always wanna choose things that you want to be the same, patterns you wanna follow, and then patterns you want to break. So a pattern I'm trying to follow here is yellow towards the end, and um, yellow towards the outside, red towards the inside one pattern I'm trying to follow. But I'm trying to have a little bit of variation in color as far as every single petal. So there's my little yellow to red. Okay, so I'm gonna do a whole nother layer of petals. And this part I am making more geometric. So this part I'm making more crafty. So I'm trying to make every petal. So one pattern I'm trying to follow is making every petal just about the same size. One pattern I'm trying to, um, and then 
but I want a little bit of, I wanted that variation of color within each one. And I'm gonna go through just a few of these and now I'm gonna blend them just a little bit because now they're a little too perfect. I want, or I'm gonna try to smooth it out in the middle just a little bit. Trying to find that balance here, maybe a little yellow. Okay, so now this next layer, I'm gonna try to have a lot more yellow on my brush. And I'm gonna go pretty much in between each one. And when I do this, I, that, that red underneath is not dry. So it's gonna grab a lot of the red. So I'm getting mostly yellow on my brush knowing that one, I'm not gonna clean my brush, and two, it's gonna pick up some of that red. Or a lot of that red, which is good. That's what I want. Now, if you want your yellow to be really vibrant, one option is to um, put white underneath of it. I'm not that worried about that, so I'm not gonna do that. That is an option if you feel like your yellow just, especially if you're using like a crafty, a, um, a very crafty paint that's thin. I'm gonna leave it. And you can see I could have stopped and just had one layer of petals, but I like the two layers. So I'm gonna leave it like that. more petals here. Okay, now I'm gonna bring in a little bit of that yellow on the, some of these edges here. A little bit of that yellow. Good. And that I think is good. So I'm gonna be done with that there. Now, one more thing I am gonna do though, is I'm gonna make, do that, um, I'm actually gonna try something that might be a mistake, but I like trying things. So I'm gonna actually do one more layer of this with a teeny bit of blue on my sponge here. I'm gonna try to make this really light. It's a little bit of blue, and it's and it's picking up some of the red and yellow from the petals, which I am okay with. And I'm twist turning it as I go. Just a 
little bit of another collar right there. Falling right along the edge and I'm going into my petals just a little bit. And I'm gonna stop there because I like that and I don't wanna do too much. The other thing I did notice though is this yellow. I'm gonna do a little bit more yellow right here. And this yellow is coming out a little bit more because that brown is pretty much dry. So a little yellow right in here. I just don't, I don't want the center of that flower to be boring. So I wanna have a lot of color in there. I'm gonna do a little bit more of my red too. Okay, so I think that that's good now. I could get like a glitter or a gold in there. I have done gold in the center of some flowers before. That's pretty. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is, is put, place my stencil. So hopefully I estimated correctly and that's like I said, I'm gonna be off center a little to the left. So you can kind of see it here. So I do, I do make these stencils, like I add the lines um, on Photoshop, and then I, oh, I do like that blue, actually. And then I um, cut them on just a regular Cricut machine, but that's why my stencil's in two parts. So um, right here, I'm not quite able, I am gonna have to be a little bit on top of my flower, which is fine, but I don't want to place the stencil yet. Luckily, the stencil is in two parts, like I said, because I cut them out in my Cricut. I do want to decide on color, and I think I am going to go with that bright, vibrant, uh, tealish blue. I think that'll contrast enough. Um, I'll start here on the bottom. So hopefully I'll be able to finish during this session, but that, that sunflower, it just, it just kept growing. And that's okay. Um, actually, and usually a lot of beginners have the opposite issue of making things too small. Always try to make it bigger is what I, let me say. Usually there's a little bit, I don't know, I feel like there's a little more character with making it bigger. So I, I have this all the way aligned at the bottom. I'm going to tape it down. I especially wanna put tape right here, painter's tape right here, because this is really close to the edge. So if I know where I, I use my tape to measure my, okay. So I'm gonna put this right here, cover that edge, and I'm trying to be really aligned with the side because it is oh i'm a little bit crooked so let's make sure i'm really lined up right here okay then i'm going to make the color i want so i'm use the leftover white i have dark blue and, te and teal And hopefully none of these explode. That probably my hand. It's a lot of that's probably more blue than I should have done, but okay. So now I'm gonna mix all three of those. So I did I put a little too much paint on here, but we're gonna just see how this goes. I usually say this to start with a lot less because white disappears, and you can see that white just disappears, but I don't want it to be, I like the color of that. Um, white gets overtaken by other colors really quickly. So I usually recommend not doing what I'm doing and starting out with just a tiny bit of things like the blue and the teal. But here you can see, I'm just using the back of the brush to mix this. There 
we go. And then I like that color. I'm gonna do a little bit more of this teal. Oh, got a little paint booger in there. I'm gonna add a tiny drop of yellow. I think that's going to be the color for me here. Maybe a little bit more of this. Okay, there we go. I think that's going to be what I end up with here. Okay, so the next, so now I'm going to work on my stencil. Make sure your stencil's really straight and I'm gonna tape it down a little bit more. I sometimes skip taping and it's such an easy part of the step that I try not to anymore because it's so easy to do just taping it down and it can really save you a headache later. So I usually tape it in a few places and again I try to find anywhere where the stencil is thin and make sure I tape there. That way if I'm using a bigger sponge brush, now I don't have to be careful right here. Um, if that tape wasn't there, I could end up with a line right there where the stencil was. So that's that's something I want to avoid. So just spend that extra, you know, 10 seconds, buy the tape for a dollar. This is painter's tape. Um, I actually do like the Dunn Edwards painter's tape, which this is not, but um, I'm not too particular about painter's tape. What I have found is that it's mostly about timing with painter's tape, you want it to, you want to time it. So, you know what? I don't love that color now. I wanted a little, I want to add more blue. Um, yeah, it's more about timing with painter's tape. You want it to be on there for just the right amount of time. So, I'm adding a little more blue to that color. Um, so I want the paint to be dry, uh, to be pretty dry when I peel off the stencil, but I don't want it to be absolutely dry. So if you leave it, especially if you leave it on for hours or overnight, um, then it'll end up peeling off some of the paint with it. Um, and I found that with just about every brand. So you want to take it off like the same day. You want to take it off when you can touch it. I'm going to dab some of this off. When you can touch it. Um, a little bit better so I can touch it and no no paint will come off on my finger but I don't want it like to wait hours and hours so right now it's too wet right now too much comes off on my finger so I want to give it a little bit more time than that the other thing I want to do these I don't have to be as careful with because they're big letters but I want to that first layer should look something like that very light um, because if you put the paint on too thick, it's gonna end up um, that was a little too thick. Then it'll end up leaking under your stencil. So I'm focusing on going straight up and down. As I go here, there we go. And, uh, and more layers is better. So doing several thin layers is better than one thick, thick, thick layer. Uh, this stencil is one of the easier ones because these are spaced out. So even if it leaks, the word welcome will come through. So I don't have to be as careful as I do with some of my other ones. Some of, some of my stencils have really thin lines. But you can go fast. So going fast is okay. 
but um, and I just scooped a bunch of paint. So that would be way too thick if I put it on that M right now. I'm making almost like a palette on, on my stencil here that I can use as I go. I could have taped all along the edge. I usually don't bother to do that. Um, and actually the reason isn't just to save tape, but also because it's hard to get, it's easier just to put little pieces I find than one big strip, because one big strip, then I have to worry about getting the tape on straight or it'll kind of mess with my stencil a little bit. So I don't, I don't worry about going around the entire border. So I don't skip the tape, but I don't go overboard either. I do like that color. The other thing I think to get this color really, I think the fact that I used, I used the same white, that like grayish white. I think I would have been happier if I used a vibrant white. I think that would have given this just, this color just perfect. It's still a little bit dull for me. Okay, now the E. And that E is blending in a little bit with my background. So I think what I'm gonna do, because it's on top of this grass, that E is blending in just a little bit. So I am going to take a little bit of white and go on top of this just a little bit with some white. Dabbing on there a little bit. And I could have skipped the grass here, but I liked it. Ooh, there we go. A little bit more white. I'm a little worried I'm going a little bit fast on this E, so it might be a little bit leaking on here. We'll see. I'm do a little bit more white. Okay, so I made that, and I brought it up into the M just a little bit so it doesn't look like I, so it looks like I did that E on purpose. All right, there we go. Now the bottom. I still have this, uh, my bottom of my sun, I'm gonna go down up here. This is still a little bit wet. Let's see where this welcome comes in, the W. I think it's gonna be okay. Ideally, I would wait a little bit longer, but I want to finish this today on the video. So I'm gonna just gently, ever so gently, put this down on here. And hope for the best here, okay. Okay, a little bit of painter's tape. I'm not going to put the painter's tape over my petals. I'm going to do it right there. And I'm going to do that W last. I'm going to start with the L here. That way I can give that, oops, that W a little bit more time, the petals to dry a little bit longer. 
All right, there's the L. Oh, I did match. I, this is the color I liked. I did match it pretty close. So I think the difference is, I think I needed a little bit more vibrant white. Oh, I didn't tape. didn't notice because I was sitting on the other tape. I'm gonna dab this off. I'm dabbing it off just a little bit, so that's just plastic there. And then I'm gonna go right on top. I'm gonna do a little bit of white inside this L, right where, whoops, right where that leaf is. A little bit more white. up and down on this. Okay. I'm going to lower this just a little bit more. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the W. And hopefully my red and yellow are dry enough that it won't get on this brush. We'll see. And here's I want to be careful right here along this edge because what you could do is get a little blue outside, which I may have done which we can correct, but we try not to. I know we would be really careful along this edge right here. I don't want to tape right there because that yellow, that sunflower is so pretty wet. So if I tape on top, it'll probably peel it off. Okay. That is it. Got all my letters done. I want to get a good layer of paint before I peel. Do a little bit more white right in here. Right in here on this L. Hey, now a moment of truth. We'll see how I stenciled if I rushed it too much. Oh, actually, well, we're gonna, it's a little wet for peeling, but as long as I'm careful, it should be okay. I'll show you the full, full view in just a moment. I'm peeling off the second one. You can't quite see that, but I'm peeling off the other one. There we go. All right, let's see. Let me switch views for you guys. Okay. 
here is the finished project. You get that little, and you can see the E, so adding a little white to that E is a good idea. So let me get that a little closer. It would have been cute and white too. So another thing I could go in with that I'm not going to do today, but I could go in here. There we go. And there's my little welcome sign with the sunflower in the background. Um, one thing you can do is I can go in and I can like fill in all these little stencil gaps is what I call them. I'm not going to because I did that little bit of white and it would be hard to match that on the L and the E. The E blends in a little bit, but not so much you can't read it. I could have done black for the welcome, but I like, I like this color. So that's it, all done. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, I'm gonna try to do these. And if there's any projects that you would like to see, let me know because I do a lot of different kinds of projects. So let me know if there's a project that you would like to see. Um, there's a bell icon to subscribe. I'm going to do one again next Thursday. I have an idea what I'm going to do, but if someone would like to see something else, I could do that instead. Um, and that is it. So I will see you guys next week. Thank you for watching.